I mean, the last couple of days has, has been tough. Um, you know, anytime you pour as much and, and, and as many people pour as much into the season and, and you, you get to the postseason, you get that opportunity, and then all of a sudden it's finished. Um, you know, it's 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 difficult. It's not, You kind of go numb. Um, you know, you play back every scenario, think about, you know, where you could have done some things different um you know you think about some of the you know some of the great things that uh different guys did and you re reflect a lot on the season um but you know it's difficult when uh you have a great opportunity in front of you and you feel like you have the people to to get it done and it comes to an end like it did none of us have ever had to manage an elimination game so and trying to get inside your head about game four just a quick flashback to the third inning mm -hmm. when the hit by pitch happens and then the soft single by pierce right cc had allowed six base runners in the first 12 batters at that point you have a string of righties coming up why not or was there any thought of getting robertson up earlier because i know he got up later in the inning yeah there there was i mean the <clears throat> we had him moving around the previous inning so getting prepared um so there was some thought about you know after the benintendi hit batter like maybe that's the spot um you know i also felt like and with cc you know there's there's times throughout the year where you know we're a little more aggressive and getting them out of there because we feel like you know you can really recognize his stuff falling off i i, I felt like stuff wise he was okay and you know with Going into that game, obviously we had Robbie, Britton, Batances, and Chappie um, well rested and knew we could get length out of them. Um, I think where the decision for me came down to balancing, all right, if we got six or seven potential innings out of those four guys, um, you know, when is the right time to – to, to make that happen. In my mind, it wasn't a clear th decision to say, CC can't get through this, or CC, and I thought there was great value if CC does get through the third, knowing we have those four guys in a six inning scenario, so that if there was any bump in a road with those four guys along the way, um, in a six inning scenario, I thought we could absorb it. Beyond that, I thought we were playing a little bit with fire. Um, you know, CC ends up getting uh, JD and Bogarts out, and then and then Kinsler smokes the ball off them. And at that point, after the Kinsler one, I I just felt like we need to get him through Bradley. You know, he jams Nunez for the for the next hit. Um, but I mean, those those are the decisions, especially in the postseason, that I understand come under the microscope. Um, are very you know it's a little bit gray you know it's easy to it's easy in that spot to just kind of i'm going to run and and go get robbie in this spot but then maybe we're leaving ourselves a little bit short going forward with a guy that i didn't think was overly off his game in cc um and as it turns out you know, after the leadoff homer that Britain gives up, you know, they go on and, and shut them down for six innings. And I feel like we weren't up against it with any of them as far as, um, you know, overextending them. You know, I was able to go get Robbie for the JD at bat uh, for Dellen later in the game. Um, but you also understand that um, those are the close decisions. And, <clears throat> you know, in, in a way, in a way cost us because you know that was the inning ultimately that that we weren't able to overcome Sweeney Aaron that one and the decision with Severino the day before do you feel like now looking back that those were things that because you and Josh sitting on the bench had never been through sped up for you in that situation no no I think it was very clear um, for all of us of you know how we kind of envision things playing out i never felt like anything sped up it was it was the decision and i think looking back at at the game 3 with sevy where sevy i didn't feel like was on top of his game 
And I think that's the one that I look back where I say, all right, <clears throat> I probably got greedy with Seve in the fourth there um, with wanting to get him through the bottom of the order. And he came out and really struggled, obviously. And, and that – um, and then it kind of snowballed. You know, I think the thing is a little bit different in game three is that we weren't quite as well rested with all our leverage guys, so we would have had to dig deep to battle back in that. Um, but the Seve one I, after the third inning is the one I look back on that I, I should have had him out of there because I, I sensed that he wasn't on top of his game. I didn't feel – I felt like they were having a lot of good swings against him and – and I probably got a little greedy thinking he could get through the bottom of the order there in the fourth. We asked you a lot this year about your offense and the inconsistency, runners in scoring position, things like that. There were a lot of things that you pointed to that should even out over the course of a year, mm -hmm. and it seemed like they never did. Is there anything that you saw that broke down with approach or just results? Is there anything you would want your hitters It seemed to like they never evened out. The the oper you got you kept getting opportunities mm -hmm. and the hits with runners scoring position never came in the series, yeah and during the course of the season too it seemed at times, it seemed like those numbers didn't even out for you. I think during the season they were pretty comparable, if you look across the board you know as far as w what we're you know in a short series look the team that gets home the team that gets sent home is probably not going to get those hits ultimately and. That's that's the reality and the harshness sometimes of postseason baseball is, you know, the teams that come up with those big hits or or come up with the, uh, you know, a big extra base hit or a home run with runners on base in a big spot, you know, those are oftentimes the games you win and move on. Um, I would say, you know, I know because a lot of you guys ask me all the time about the reliant on the home run, and, you know, I bristle at it sometimes. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean we're not searching for the perfect offense, the best we can be. I think sometimes, you know, there's the perception that in a situation you can just pull a single out of your pocket with runners in scoring position, and it happens. It's it's not that simple, and guys are trying to have those at-bats. Um, so, but that said, we're always striving to be the best, most complete offense we can be. Um, we were a very good offense overall this year. We can absolutely get better. And I wouldn't say we're the best offense in the game. And w where are things we can prove? Being better, tougher out situationally, even being better at controlling the strike zone. Those are all things that we need to continue to work on, continue to improve on if we're going to be the best we can absolutely be. Andy, to the left. In, in addition to the, the reasoning that you just articulated with the pitching to those two questions, is, is was it also a factor, like, do you have uh, in, in your game planning or in the analytics to you're trying to set up certain matchups, whether it's Lynn against the top of the order for what, however his stuff plays or, or uh, you want Robertson to face certain guys, and does that contribute to trying to extend the starters and trying to strike a balance there because you're waiting for a certain matchup with a certain reliever. Right. At times that can factor in. I I think when we're talking about a lot of our, especially our high leverage guys, there's very few situations that we don't feel comfortable with them being in. Yes, in a perfect world where you're trying to get certain guys to a certain point of the lineup, but you know, especially in, in playoff situations where situations are you know, so magnified and so important, obviously. Anytime we have one of our high leverage guys going, it's usually a matchup we feel at least decent about. Joe, to the right. Aaron, you, you said you want to try to get tougher out situ situationally and better control of the strike zone. I, I just wonder if you, in basketball, if you had a bunch of 5'10 guys, you're probably not going to block a lot of shots. Do you have the people in a lineup to be tougher out situationally and better at controlling the strike zone? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I think we have the people to be an absolute elite offense. Um, you know, we had some guys that <clears throat> had <clears throat> outstanding seasons, some guys that had probably years that um, were down for them personally. But I think overall, 
we absolutely have the pieces to be an, an elite offense in in so many different ways. Um, now it's it's on them, it's on me, it's on us as coaches to continue to um, to continue to improve to get to that level that we feel like we can reach. Um, and <clears throat> I feel like we're so close to that. But we all have to get a little bit better um, if if we're going to get ultimately to where we want to go, and that's to bring another championship home. Uh, Dan over here and Mark in the back. One of the things that people talked about when, when you were hired was getting through to Gary Moore. Uh, obviously, this year was not what anyone wanted. How do you fix that going forward, and what do you do differently than last yeah. year? Um, I think in a lot of ways, I, I, I'm all in and believe in, in the player. Um, I think Gary is going to absolutely realize his potential and as tough as this year, year was at times for him, um, there's no doubt in my mind that he will benefit from all that he went through this year. Um, and I believe we were starting to, I, I believe we we're seeing the strides that we we're pouring into all year and hoping we would start to see. And I, and I think by even this last series, um, the last at bat, which I thought was a championship caliber at bat, um, he was getting to that point. Unfortunately, it ended and we don't get to continue to see him but you know this off season the work continues for him and he knows that and uh, and and I think I think the end result is we're going to be talking about a very polished elite level player um, and and I think this year and some of the struggles that he went through will we'll look back on as a contributing factor to that because I think there are a lot of lessons to be learned this year for, from my standpoint, certainly from Gary's standpoint, um, and, and how he continues to grow at such an important position for us. Uh, Mark in the back, right. Aaron, you were talking about the offense and having the personnel you think to be elite. Does this require then if you have the personnel, some kind of a tweak in the way, that they're up there with their approaches because you talk about going up there with strike zone discipline but the intent to go try to drive a pitch for extra bases. But doesn't that seem to go counter sometimes to making contact in like a situation per se? Um, do those things square up? I, I think they do square up um, and they should square up. Um, you know, typically as, as a player's home run rate improves over the course of a career, so too does his contact rate. I mean, in th in theory, those things should kind of go hand in hand. He should be becoming a better hitter along the way. Um, and I, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to have tweaks in personnel, you know, as 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 the winter unfolds and the roster inevitably has some tweaks to it or changes or whatever, um, and and hopefully whatever addition subtractions we make better complement us as a as a team as a roster going forward but um look I, I think i think it's about continuing to grow as a hitter and i don't think that power and the ability to put the ball in play or the ability to be a tough out in a tough spot are mutually excuse exclusive over to the left christy you talked a lot about improving and getting better. After one year in this job, how will you improve going into next year? What will you do differently? Um, I think, obviously, having never done this, um, coming into the organization when I did last year, kind of learning about the organization, about our players, getting to know guys, all these things that you do on the fly and – um, kind of rapid fire. Um, I feel like going into this off season, you know, knowing my players as well as I do now, knowing my staff, knowing the front office, 
hopefully that puts me in a better position to hit the ground running in the off season. Um, and I think it's about continuing to pr improve. I talk about our players and continue to improve our game on the margins that in every facet, same, same holds true for me, you know, and, and, you know, are there some things that I want to change a little bit and how we, um, get information to the players, how we shape our game plans, um, how my communication happens with my coaches and my players. Those are all things that frankly start now and, and, and hopefully the off season provides a time when I can refine those things, sharpen those things, get even better at those things because they're so important. Um, you know, living here now year round, I'll be in here. So I'll have a chance to kind <clears> of <throat> be in the office and collaborating with, with our s scouts and cash and our analysts. And, um, so I, I can't wait to continue it, um, kind of in earnest because I know, um, what a, what a good position we are as a club, as an organization, and the opportunity that is still in front of us. Uh, Eric and Clat. Aaron, do you look at Luke Voigt as your everyday first baseman going into spring training next year, or is that an open competition in your eyes? Um, well, <clears throat> he certainly came over here and kind of was given that opportunity and and took it and kicked the door in and it's hard to argue with what he was able to do um, down the stretch for us really on a very consistent level for us as far as the at bat quality went um, so we're very excited about the player that we got um, we'll see how the off season unfolds but right now that's he, he grabbed that job there's no question about that, but there's, you know, there's all kinds of things that can can transpire over the over the winter and and on into spring training and, um, you know, so I'm sure there'll continue to be competition on all kinds of level, but he certainly, uh, with what he was able to accomplish for us down the stretch, um, has a leg up on those kind of things. Clap all the way to the right. Aaron, I'm curious how you evaluate uh, Stanton's body of work uh, this year. I mean, he obviously came with a great deal of fanfare, but his home runs were down. <coughs> Excuse me, RBIs were down and strikeouts were up. Uh, do you think it was just first-year jitters or adjustment to New York, or is there something else going on? Yeah, I wouldn't say jitters. I would say, <laughs> first of all, you know, I think you guys in covering him, and, and seeing how he was able to handle and navigate the ups and downs that came with the season, that came with being such a high-profile player. Um, I come away just so impressed and, and an admiration for who he is and the way he handled things and the pro that he was all the time. Um, certainly there were some ups and downs that, you know, I, I think – a a uh, contributing factor in that is, you know, being, you know, a high-profile guy, National League MVP, switching leagues now all of a sudden, all that comes with now walking into a market like this and playing for the New York Yankees, um, <clears throat> learning, seeing, even though it's it's different, obviously, than it was 20, 30 years ago when guys didn't change teams as much or there wasn't the, you know, interleague play and all that. Um, it's still new. It's still in a new division. And I think one thing Giancarlo has shown, and the evidence would bear it out over his career, the more he sees a pitcher, um, the more success he has. He really is able to, from experience – um eventually have success so i think coming in next year without you know having to meet the organization meet new teammates get accustomed to playing in a new organization all that goes with being john carlos stanton in in new york um i think it'll be a much more normal situation for him and i think he'll be now in a situation where he's facing guys that 
he's now experienced and I think he'll benefit from that. And, and, um, and I think <clears throat> I would expect for him to, even though he did have a very strong year for us, you know, 38 homers, kind of surviving a t really tough start to the season. He was massively productive for us. I think it's reasonable to think that he'll be even more productive as he comes in here next year as a second year player and, and kind of, um, much more comfortable from the get-go. Dave, middle left. Aaron, give, given the spot that you put in this year, you know, without the experience and get, taking over a team that with the World Series aspirations, how do you think you did looking back overall? <laughs> As I've said, I, I'll leave that to you guys. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't even want to go there and reflect on, you know, I'm constantly, you know, evaluating our team um you know how we go about things the decisions we make our process you know i reflect on those kind of things and try to evaluate the best i can but as far as then evaluating how i did uh, you know i i leave that to you guys honestly uh who else uh bruce in the middle aaron what's your message to yankees fans on why you believe the season's over now and why it will be different next year First of all, <clears throat> our fans are unbelievable, and <clears throat> I know many of them are heartbroken like like a lot of us are um, because I, I think we understand of the potential of this club um, to see the, those last two games when we're behind the way they continue to be a factor, and I feel like in a lot of ways our ninth, our ninth inning rally there, you know, was in large part due to them kind of almost willing it you know they they just weren't going to die um and you know my message as my message was to our players is um i think we all understand that we're capable of big things and i think we are on the short list of teams that legitimately can think we can win a world championship but we got to get better and um and that starts with me um, but it starts with all our guys, like going into the winter, like understanding that a lot of guys did a lot of amazing things, a lot of successful things, but we got to continue to be obsessed with getting a little bit better in every, in every asset. And, you know, from my standpoint, that's kind of starts now, like diving into being a part of, you know, you know, what we do in the winter as far as being here collaborating talking baseball how can we be better how can my process be better how can my communication with coaches and and just getting information to players and ultimately our biggest job is putting trying to get our players in the best position to be successful and that's an ongoing process ongoing trying to develop that and uh but ultimately, it's continuing to get better on the margins in every aspect of the game. And uh, that's our expectations. We're not far off at all. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would say I can't wait, but I feel like I'm in the midst of living. Like, I can't wait to continue to chase this thing. Ed in the back, middle. Thanks. From what you perceived the job to be before – you started the first game. Now the season is over. Is the did the reality match the perception? I would say, how do you really know? I would say, whatever. I would say, to some degree, yes. Um, but I would also say, you don't really, you never really know until you've sat in the chair and you know all the little big things that come across that desk on a given day um it's been it's been overall amazing i've loved it i've loved every second of it um it's it's tough it's fun it's rewarding it's gut-wrenching it's painful when you when it comes to an abrupt end um but I, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else right now. It's, it's, 
especially with our guys and and what I know we're capable of and knowing that we're one of those teams that legitimately legitimately walks in with with a chance to to gain the ultimate prize which is another world championship I feel like um, to have that opportunity with this group um, I don't take lightly Pete and Lindsay <clears throat> Howard, uh, did you feel it uh, with Severino that tipping pitches was an issue either against the Red Sox or at any other time this year and just generally uh, was there something more going on below the surface that led to his second half? Um, I think it has ha happened at times. Um, I think he's done a good job of correcting it, um, but it, I think it would pop up from time to time, and it's something that we're, we'll we'll address even more so this winter in trying to, you know, eliminate any chance of that happening. Um, as far as under the surface, no, no. And, and trust me, I, you know, I would dig and w we dug and tried to find as much as we could. Um, but just feel like he had some bumps along the way. Um, you know, there were times, obviously we gave him extra, extra days in between a start, um, that, you know, probably benefited him at times, but I thought, I feel like physically, no. I th feel like he is, he was sound. He is sound. And, um, and I look forward to, to him, um, coming out even better next year and, and being that ace type pitcher that we know he can be. Lindsay. Um, this information or this organization provides a lot of information to you and the players. Do you feel that it took some time to learn how to digest that and become fluent in it? And how do you think you can better use that set of information next season? Um, I'm sure, it takes a little bit of time, I guess. Um, you know, I felt a pretty good grasp of of it early on um but you know hopefully with each day with experience hopefully it becomes even more clear and hopefully i understand it even better hopefully i understand how to distribute it and and get it in the hands of of players and ultimately again getting back to trying to get players in the best position to be successful and and that part that information and how to get it to them and how much is part of that uh what was the the back end of the question sorry how can you right um no i th i think it's continuing to grow with it and um uh, hopefully, hopefully the message is always on some level simplified. You know, I think, I think the best information is delivered simply, you know, and so it doesn't, cl y you want guys to have an advantage, to have an edge, but you never want a player to be cluttered or impeded by getting in their own way you know ultimately players are here because they're young men that are really talented and you want that talent to to flourish and so one of the challenges is who who can handle this much information who wants less and, and kind of figuring that out so that ultimately the talent sh shines Dan to the left Aaron you talked about uh, Voight earlier on the other side of that how does greg go from being you know a non-factor the last month of the season back to a competitive player with a chance to win his job back well the one thing with greg that i certainly never lost and and i don't think anyone in the organization is we've seen him be an impact player at at times in his career so you know, this year in a lot of ways is a little bit of a lost season for him. Obviously, getting starting out being hurt again and, and having that surgery, that was a tough blow. And I think in some ways 
probably never all never got all the way back physically to where I think he'll even be next year. So I think there's a realistic chance that he comes into spring training next year um, physically in a really good place with a chance to have a normal off season of training and getting his body how he wants it. And hopefully um, the results from that will follow. And um, so he'll, he would, he'll have his opportunities and, we've never lost sight of the fact that we know this guy when he's right can really hit and um hopefully he'll come in physically mentally everything ready to go and take advantage of of the opportunities that he'll get back right Henri. aaron uh, how do you assess tanaka and uh, what did you learn about him throughout the season thought he had a really strong year for us obviously um and down the stretch for us when he when he came off the disabled list you know along with jay was probably our best pitchers you know down the final month and a half two months of the season obviously a strong start in the postseason against boston has has earned a reputation of being a big game pitcher and i think that's because he's earned that um feel like when the competition is at its best Moss is usually at his best too which is a pretty good trait to have um but he's I, I I love the way he goes about things he's a perfectionist he's really good at his craft and uh and had a really strong year for us and, and a guy obviously that we will continue to count on for big starts and big spots and hopefully uh, cont continue what's been a really good uh, career as a Yankee. Uh, Joel and Brendan. Aaron, what area of personnel do you think you guys need to uh, deal with most in the off season and how big a seat at the table do you think you have your voice this off season to be heard by Cashman and others on uh, what what you want and how you want to go get it. Well, personnel stuff, you know, Cash is coming in here. I'll let you talk to him about that. Um, as I've said, I think we are one of those teams on the short list that is capable of winning a world championship, how we are now. I think we're very close. Um, I plan on having a seat at that table. Um you know, I will be here, I will be present, I'll have an opinion, but ultimately those kind of decisions come down with cash in the front office about the personnel decisions we make. Um, you know, I like to think that, you know, they value what I what I have to say, so I'll be in there and not shy about giving my opinions on certain things, but ultimately those personnel decisions come down to cash in them and um it's one of the things I look forward to about this off season is now being here and in the job and, um, you know, being able to have those kind of conversations and evaluations and thoughts on different players and where we're looking to improve. Um, <clears throat> depending, I mean, there's so many dominoes that happen that if you make a big move, how it affects things, but, the bottom line is I feel like we're close enough to where the right tweaks maybe are what puts us over the hump. Brendan. How far is Andujar from becoming a guy you don't have to pull in the sixth inning of a playoff game for defense? And in what area must he improve most defensively so that doesn't happen? Right. I think he's, I think he can absolutely get there. And, um, and I think he made, big strides in that this winter um he needs to continue to make those strides and i think the biggest thing is comes down to his footwork and um because he has the athleticism i believe the the hands he has really good hands um the arm strength um i think i think his his pre-pitch and his footwork are going to determine if he becomes that frontline defender at third base too. And 
um, and I, I do believe it is in there, and he can get there. Um, but it it is going to, we need to continue to work at it, work hard at it. And uh, and this winter will be important for him as far as that goes. And um, I think it's really important to acknowledge of what a great season, though, that Miggy had. And, and that includes defensively. Because when I got this job, there was all kinds of questions on on that side of the ball and I think he um he earned every day at bats with obviously the way he swings the bat but because he improved as much as he did defensively and that's a tribute to him and his work ethic but um now it's on, on all of us to help him to continue to make those strides so he can continue to be work his way to become an elite player in this league and I think that footwork is is the biggest thing we're going to have cash in here in a few minutes but in fairness to you guys there's not a great point to drop this in but i want aaron to be able to respond to it uh dd had an mri yesterday uh he will uh undergo tommy john surgery uh at a yet to be determined time we're scheduling that now but since aaron's here i know that would have come up with cash and i didn't want you guys to have to backtrack and try and find aaron again so with that, let's uh, have a couple questions for Aaron before we get cash in here. Brendan. When did his elbow start becoming an issue? Um, how did that happen? And what's the recovery? Yeah. So we think it happened at uh, Fenway on the <clears throat> so ball off, off the green monster that he went out and got and threw in. Um it's a right arm, yeah. So whether that was game one or two, I'm not even sure. Um, uh, and he felt something then. Um, and just kind of being the player that as tough as he is and as non-dramatic as he is, just kind of played with it the last couple of days. And, uh, but... So we had the MRI, and it revealed a tear. So he'll have that. Um, we're optimistic that he'll be back at some point during the season. Um, I don't want to speculate too much on when. It's obviously different than a pitcher. You know, he's not coming back on the mound. and So we think there's a realistic chance that he plays the bulk of the season with us. Um, but, you know, that said, obviously – if, if surgeries next week, we'll know a lot more after the surgery as far as the timeline goes. But we we are optimistic that he'll he'll play the a lot of the season with us. Andy to the left <clears throat> is is Glaber someone who you see as more of an emergency shortstop, or could he play for a long stretch? Either, I mean, the off season will unfold and and what's our roster look like, what's our personnel, will we'll depend on that. Um, I think Labor Torres is very capable of being an everyday shortstop. Um, obviously, we love him at second. And with Didi, obviously, we, we like having him at second. But those will be, uh, you know, decisions that become more clear over the next few months as our roster shakes out and, and who we have and, you know, are we in a stopgap situation? Those kind of things that would be hard to predict at this point. But we feel like labor would be capable in an everyday role or or like he did this year where he moves over and spells a guy from time to time. Jack and Billy. Jack, go ahead. Aaron, I know that this might be a question for Brian, and I also may be asking you to forecast here, but can you go into 2019 – planning around him or do you have to act as if you might not have him because you don't know what happens post-surgery right um sh you never know what can happen post uh, post-surgery will have a much better idea but my expectation is that he will be with us provided everything goes according to plan for much of the season so how much of that, th that'll be what unfolds over the next week and then the, the weeks beyond that as, as he begins his rehab and whatnot. 
Billy, um, do you have any sense of how different uh, recovery from Tommy John is for a position player as opposed to a pitcher? Um, no, um, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a lot similar. Obviously, you know, with a pitcher, you know, whether it's 12, 14, 16 months, um, I would say the end result is very different. Getting back to being a major league pitcher is a lot different than being a position player. I, what that timeline is or how that unfolds, I'm sure I'll get educated on that over the coming weeks. And how um... – I mean, he, presumably he can hit a lot sooner than he can throw. Is there, when you say he'll be with us for a long period of time, do you envision some of that as being a DH? Probably not, because I think, and again, I'm speculating a little bit, but I'm sure you get to a point as a non-pitcher to where you can, you know, you're throwing, you know, several months in. So... I would envision that those two aren't that far off as far as be, being able to throw as a position player along with hitting. Okay. Aaron, thanks for the time. We, uh, I, let's ask Cash. I mean, I don't think there's any big secrets, but let's just – I think Cash has the list. Uh, thank you to all you guys. Uh, I appreciate the relationship I have with a lot of you guys. Thank you.